Hey guys, it's Lukeon, and today I am going to be starting another reading vlog. I have not done a reading vlog dedicated to like a specific book or release in a pretty long time, so I'm excited to do that again. And the book that I'll be talking about today is none other than The Bronzed Beasts by Roshni Chokshi. If you did not know, this is the third and final book in the Gilded Wolves trilogy, one of my absolute favorite series of all time. If you need proof that I love this series, you can watch my 50 plus minute review of the first two books in the series, The Gilded Wolves and The Silvered Serpents, which it was like me, I was vlogging my experience rereading the series, and I just reread them again in preparation to read this finale, and I thought that since I did do a reading vlog documenting my experience reading the first two books, I would do another one while I read the third and final book, because this is a very momentous occasion in my opinion. But right now it is Saturday, and I think it's probably around like 9.30, so I'm going to try to read this whole book this weekend. I probably will because I'm just like so excited to start reading it. It came out on Tuesday and it's been killing me that I haven't been able to read it because I was still rereading The Gilded Wolf and the Silvered Serpents, but I'm so excited to read this book, like I honestly can't believe it's here. I think I kind of pushed the thought that it was being released soon, like, from my head, because I, for so long, it had been so far away. But now it is here, and I don't think it will feel real until I actually start reading it, so I'm gonna start reading it. But I'm very excited to see how it will go, because The Gilded Wolves and The Silver Servants are very different books. Like, I think I said in my reading vlog that The Gilded Wolves was, like, very like, there was a lot of mythology, there was, like, a lot, like, a lot of lush descriptions, it was very opulent and extravagant and, like, set in Paris and all that stuff, and then it was also, like, very plot-driven but with great characters to back it up, while The Silvered Serpents is kind of a little bit darker and slower, and it's more character-based with still an interesting plot and, like, mystery and all these riddles and puzzles to kind of back it up as well. So, I'm excited to see how The Bronze Beast will work out, and like, what that kind of balance will be. Maybe it'll be, like, exactly balanced. I don't know, but I'm excited to see. Also, this video will have spoilers in it, so I will feel free to spoil The Guild of the Wolves and Silver Serpents and The Bronze Beasts, like, as I read it, so you can also spoil in the comment section down below if you wish. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I'm really excited to see... So anyway, spoilers starting now. I am interested to see how this book will be, because at the end of The Silvered Serpents, the characters are kind of split apart, and even the synopsis kind of alludes to them being apart for, like, a period of time in this book. And I also was flipping through the book, and there are, like, zero puzzles. The Gilded Wolves and The Silvered Serpents both have, like, these diagrams and puzzles, like, and art in the books. And I've, like, seen, like, one piece of art <laughs> in The Bronze Beast, like, when I was flipping through it. So, I don't know how that will work out. But, you know, I'm gonna stop stalling, and I'm gonna try to get through part one right now. I don't know how long it is, but I'm gonna try to get through part one right now. And I'm not doing much for the day. We're gonna probably go to Barnes & Noble, just like get lunch or something. Um, and then we are going to dinner because it was my mom's birthday yesterday. But other than that, I'm not really gonna be doing much. So, I just plan on reading all day, and once I get through part one, I will let you know what my feelings are, what has happened, and how everything is going. So it has been about an hour, and I just reached part two of The Bronze Beasts by Roshni Chokshi, so I'm now like a little bit over a hundred pages in, and I'm definitely enjoying it. I don't think I'm enjoying it as much as I did with the first hundred pages of The Gilded Wolves and The Silvered Serpents, but I think my expectations going into this were just like sky high, and I kind of need to lower them just so that they're like actually reasonable. Um, but I am definitely liking it. Not a ton has happened. There was, like, a whole riddle that, um, was, like, there was this thing about, like, a god with having two heads and stuff, and we were kind of introduced to a new house that is in Venice. And speaking of Venice, I was very excited for the Venetian setting in this book because I've been to Venice, and I'm, like, taking my sixth year of Italian in school, so I know a lot of Italian, and, again, like, I've actually been there, so it, I thought it would be a lot more interesting. But so far, I kind of liked the Paris setting and the Russian setting a little bit more from the first two books, but I'm sure that once we get into, like, some more stuff in this book, 
I will be a little bit more interested. We just were talking about like Carnivale, which is like a celebration that had to do with Lent and stuff, and it's like a secret festival in this book, and some stuff is happening. They're trying to find this map, and I kind of just want all the characters to be together. It's I'm not really a big fan of books where, for the majority, like, the main characters are, like, separated. Um, it's fine, like, for a couple of chapters, but, like, so far, Severin is completely, um, separated from, like, Layla and Enrique and Sophia and Hypnos, and I do kind of wish that we got a little bit, like, got some chapters from Hypnos' perspective, because he still just feels like a little bit of a distant figure, and I don't really know why we haven't gotten his perspective. I don't know if that was, like, a purposeful choice by Rashni Chakshi, but, um, I don't know. The people that have read this book that do love the Yielded Bulls and the Silver Serpents have said that it's really amazing, and I'm sure that this is going to get five stars. There is an epilogue in this book, and it will probably break me, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. I am definitely interested to see where this book will go. Um, it's honestly not even that long, like, I think it's the shortest one in the series, um, so I'm interested to see how that kind of unfolds, but I am definitely liking it, but I don't want to, like, say anything, really, because I feel like I will just regret it if I'm, like, because right now I think this book is just, like, okay so far, like, I'm not in love with it as I was with its predecessors, but I'm sure that as the story continues, I will definitely regret that statement and probably change it a little bit. But right now, I'm definitely liking it, but I am more excited for what's to come and I'm definitely hoping that it improves more. Um, and also, I think it's also just because of my expectations. And again, this book is like a year and nine months of anticipation, so like I kind of just need to like hold off for a little bit. Right now, I think I'm probably just gonna like watch TV or something, or I don't know. But we are going to go to Barnes & Noble soon, and I'll probably try to read a little bit more before we go, and then maybe I will read a little bit of the book at Barnes & Noble. We shall see. But I am going to try to get, like, at least halfway through the book today. I'm sure that I'll be able to do that, because the book is only, I think, like, 380 pages. So, I mean, I I'm sure I will be able to finish it by tomorrow. But I am definitely intrigued to see how the story will progress, and I know that I will probably end up loving it in the end, um, when I realize that, like, it's over and I will never see these characters again. But regardless, I am definitely excited to continue, and I will see you in a little bit once I have read some more. So I am back from Barnes & Noble, I ate my lunch, and I got to part three of The Bronzed Beasts, and I am obsessed with this book now. See, I knew this was going to happen. I knew, like, I would read part two and then I would end up regretting all that I said in the last clip. But, yeah, now I'm on part three and I'm about 200, no, yeah, 200 pages in. And I absolutely love this book so far. And also, I keep forgetting that I'm, like, allowed to spoil the events of this book because I haven't done one of these dedicated reading vlogs in a really long time. But... Now that I am, I am very excited that I actually get to talk about what happens in this book, but, and also I knew that, like, the second the crew was reunited, things would really pick up for me, and that was definitely true. As soon as all five of them were back together, it felt like the first two books, and it felt like I was reminded why I love this series. So yeah, I absolutely loved the scene where they were in that little area with, like, all the potion bottles, and then that dragon came in. I am a little bit confused as to how they ended up getting out, because the stairs ended up going into the wall, and then there was the dragon, and then the scene after they defeated the dragon, it was just, like, they ended up outside, like, they left the house Janus headquarters, um, or, you know, like, the area. Um, so I'm sure, like, when I reread this book eventually, I'm gonna pay more attention to that scene and, like, actually think about the mechanics of it all. But I'm so happy that I am loving this book now, and I am just so happy to be back in this world, and I just love so many things about this book, and it felt so good, like, they were all planning and scheming, and now they're back together, and they're, like, going to find that island, and a bunch of crazy stuff just happened, like, with the bomb, and then Severin is, like, passed out or something. Um, I know he's not dead, because there are more chapters in this book from his perspective, like, if you just flip from the book, 
like you'll see that there are chapters from his perspective um so i know he's not dead but regardless i am having a great old time again roshni chakshi's writing is just so amazing and it's just so easy to read it's like smooth like butter and i am so obsessed with this book and i just like can't stop smiling about it and i like audibly gasped at some things that happened in the last hundred pages and i am living my best life i really am so excited to keep on reading i'm probably gonna go out um in the backyard to the pool and swim a little bit and probably read a little bit more of the book on my phone because i do have an ebook on my phone for it and i'm just really excited to continue on i'm like already halfway through the book which is kind of crazy but I honestly, I don't think I'll be able to finish it today, but I'll definitely be able to finish it tomorrow. I'm going to try to get like probably another hundred pages in before we go to dinner and then I can just finish it up tomorrow. But I just know that these next like 200-ish pages of the book will be so amazing and I just cannot wait. But there are some things that like are kind of weird to think about. Like this book obviously takes place in 1890 and Zofia is Jewish, and World War II has not happened yet, like, the Holocaust has not happened yet, so I'm wondering if Roshni Chakshi will, like, address that, like, maybe, like, the epilogue in this book will take place, like, a bunch of years in the future, or maybe it'll, it'll be, like, Zofia goes off to a different country or something, um, because that would literally be so sad, um, and also I feel like one of them has to die. Like, yes, Tristan died in the Guild of Bulls, but I feel like Someone in their crew probably has to die. I really hope it's not Layla because that would just be so predictable because of her whole, like, you know, being made together thing. Um, I don't think it'll be Severin just because, I don't know. Um, and I feel like Hypnos is just, like, too easy to kill off, so maybe Enrique? I don't know. I Someone could not even die, but... I guess we shall see. I'm very scared about <laughs> what might happen. Um, and I'm interested to see, like, where things are gonna go. Like, if they're gonna get to the temple, if they won't, what's gonna happen, like, with Severin and all that sort of stuff. So, I'm definitely interested to see what happens, but right now, I'm gonna take a break from reading and go swim in my pool. And then I will check back in a little bit later once I've probably gone to, like, part four or five. Hello, so it is obviously a while later. It is 8.50 and I went to dinner, like I swam, I read a little bit more, I went to dinner with my family and we just got back and I wanted to film this clip before I changed out of these clothes and looked like a gremlin again. But, um, so much has happened in the book. I think I'm now on chapter 33. So I read part three, like, when, after I went swimming, and then I read part four, like, in the car on the way to dinner, and then a little bit at dinner, and then I think I got a couple of chapters into part five. So, I have the rest of part five, and then part six, and then I'm done with the book. I think I only have about, like, 70 pages left, maybe? Um, uh, maybe even a little bit less, I don't know, but I really was not expecting to get through as much of the book today as I did, but I'm just really interested in what's going on, and, like, all the stuff that's happening, but I can't really exactly remember where I left off. I think it was after they, like, had the dragon and everything, and they were, like, on their way. Oh, Severin passed out. Okay, so, like, he woke up and everything, and then they ended up going... Like, Ruslan, like, died. But, okay, I knew Ruslan wasn't dead. Like, I knew for a fact. Like, it just happened way too easily. There was no way that Sophia's friggin' bomb or whatever actually worked and actually killed him like he was the big bad of book two and like he was the big bad like for most of this book so far so like i knew there was no way he died that easily um and it was just way too convenient that he died and Eva was fine like it just didn't make any sense to me so i was like there's something happening with him and i was right like they got to that temple and then there was like oh, those whole weird like, illusion things with like Sophia, like she saw hella um and i'm kind of confused. I don't know if Hella is alive or not. Like, I don't know if her ghost was actually real or if that was just another part of the illusion. Um, and then, like, Layla's been having some stuff where, like, she hasn't been feeling any pain because she's getting closer and closer to her death date. And then, like, there was all this stuff happening. Oh, like, Enrique and Sophia finally, like, embraced their relationship, which I really loved. Um, I do feel a little bad for Hypnos, though, but, you know, that's another point. 
Um, but they ended up like at the temple, and then there was like, this riddle that they had to solve, and then. But they ended up like in the temple, and then Hypnos had his fan that like opened, and then there was this archway, and of course Rustlin was there. I'm not surprised. Like I was a little bit like, ooh, so I was right, but I wasn't like super shocked. Um, and so then there was that, and then he's trying to get them to climb the ziggurat, which I'm pretty sure is the Tower of Babel. I don't think. I can't remember now if they actually said it was the Tower of Babel. I'm pretty sure that they did confirm it in the book. But I'm not 100% sure, but it is like this tall ziggurat that like goes to the sky and then there's like the like jungly stuff that really reminds me of Babylon. And I don't know if you guys have seen like this picture like where there was like the hanging gardens of Babylon and then some weird ziggurat in the background. If I can find it, I'll try to put it up here. but. I am pretty sure that that was like the inspiration that Rashi Chachi had, and I think it's really interesting because I like love that whole mythological, biblical stuff that's happening. So I really enjoyed that, and I think where I left off, I actually can't remember. Okay, so I'm on chapter 33, and I think Zofia just like she kind of tricked. Um, Ruslan, I think. Oh yeah, there was that whole like black fog and everything that like happened and then I don't know I'm not really sure what's happening with Severin I think in this chapter he's gonna like actually climb the ziggurat so I'm definitely interested in that and I don't know if I'll finish it tonight I honestly might like I'm I really want to keep reading but right now I'm gonna like brush my teeth and get dressed and like make my bed and everything I have like all this <laughs> these clothes that I was like trying on for dinner and stuff but yeah so I'm either gonna finish it tonight or really early tomorrow morning and I'm really excited. I really hope this will get five stars. I really hope the ending is like satisfying and all that stuff. So yeah, that is it. And I'm, that's probably gonna be the last clip I film today. Like even if I finish the book tonight, I will probably update you in the morning. So I will see you then. So it is clearly the next day. It is light outside and I'm wearing a different shirt. But, um, I did actually finish The Bronze Beast last night, so after I filmed that clip, I, like, got ready for bed and everything. And then I was like, I saw the book, and I was like, there's no way I'm not finishing this tonight, and so I did. And... I am utterly broken. <laughs> so, I think where I left off, Severin was climbing the ziggurat, and then Ruslan was like, you're tricking me, because they had barely moved. And then he, like, there was all this stuff that was happening, and, like, Layla ended up, like, falling to the ground, and then Hypnos was, like, helping carry her up to, like, where Severin thought there was, like, this Tezcat portal, and then he ended up playing the Lear, and I loved that section where, like, we went to, like, the Heart of Venice with, like, Luca and Phil Filippo? Filippo? I, 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 I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but... There were those two boys, and then we went to New York, like, at that auction sort of thing, and then we went to Manila, and I just loved how that, like, explored how the different parts of the world were, like, affected by this. I would have liked it if there was, like, a little bit more. Like, I feel like we could have gone to so many other countries and just included, like, a couple of sentences about each place. Like, I don't think we necessarily needed to talk about, like, Esmeralda in the Philippines because we never, like, went back to her. Like, we did go back to Luca and Filippo, Filippo, but I, we, like, never went back um, to Esmeralda, unless we did and I just missed it. And I also loved how, like, there was a cost. Like, Severin played the Lear. Yes, Layla was able to kind of, like, live on in that other world sort of thing, and she was able to, like, visit them in their dreams, and she said that Severin would live as long as she did, and then, but forging ended up non-existing. And, like, all the forged objects disappeared, and, like, most people, I think Zofia said that, like, the people who did have forging abilities were able to keep their powers, but, like, eventually that would die out as well. And then I loved the part where, like, Severin went to visit Layla, and then she said that she would eventually come for him, and then, and then we went back to present day, and, like, Zofia and Enrique and Hypnos are, like, a thruple now, and I just, I loved that. And Severin went back to Leiden, and then he adopted those two boys from Venice, and that, I don't know if they were ever mentioned in the rest of the series, that was a little bit random, maybe I need to reread it and just, like, go back to it, um, but, like, I liked that, and then that epilogue freaking broke me, like, 
Severin was just, like, an immortal, and he ended up growing older with, like, uh, or he ended up, like, Zofia and Enrique and Hypnos ended up, like, passing on, and then he, even his children passed on, and he went on with, like, their generations and stuff like that, and then finally at the end he went up to his penthouse and Layla was there, and I just, I absolutely loved that, and, oh, also, so randomly, we ended up finding out the name of the fallen house, it was House Addis, I think, was the original name, um, that was a little bit anticlimactic, but whatever, and then I, like, I thought the, it would be, like, called House Hades or something, like, something super underworldy, um, but, like, you know, that was fine. And so I loved that, and I do wish that we had gotten Layla's real name, like, I feel like that was a little bit, um, like, that was one thing that I would have added into the story, but otherwise, like, I absolutely loved this finale, that epilogue, like, I have since read it, like, two more times. Like, I just absolutely loved it, and I could not have imagined a better way to end this series. I put the book down because it was getting kind of annoying to hold, but I keep thinking about how big this story ended up getting. Like, from where we started in the very beginning of The Gilded Wolves to where we ended in the epilogue of The Bronzed Beasts, like, it's so crazy to think about, like, how different the story was and, like, how vast and expansive it got, and I just love that. Like, I just, it's so crazy to think about, like, where we started and now where we've ended. It's just, like, I... I love this series so much, and I love all these characters so much, and I love their ending, and I also love how, like, Roshni, like, Zofia was, like, unaffected by the Holocaust, thank God, like, that was honestly, like, I don't know why, like, I was scared about that so much, um, and, you know, it was just, Enrique got to teach, like, he was a professor, and then they all lived together, and it was just so amazing, and I loved that. And I just am so happy with where the story ended. And I do wish, again, that we got Layla's real name, but um, I'm pretty happy with where we ended up. And I love this book. I obviously gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I can safely say and confirm that this series is one of my absolute favorites. I cannot wait to reread The Bronze Beast and just read um, some of the scenes that I might have, like, missed a little bit of or, like, didn't pay as much attention to because I was, like, so, like, nervous about what would happen. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to catch, like, a bunch more stuff that I missed this first time. But I am just so happy with how this story ended and how everything came together. And I am truly just so excited. And I definitely feel a little bit empty <laughs> about where this... Like, it's over. There's never going to be another book. Um, because, like, I don't know, they're all dead. And also, like... I just don't think it would be that interesting to just read about Severn and Layla. No offense <laughs> to Severn and Layla, but, like, the the crew wouldn't work without all of them. So, I do definitely like how Roshni Chakshi was like, this is the end, she closed the door, we're never gonna get anything unless we get, like, a prequel or something. I would really like to see, like, a prequel novella of them, like, at the Nizaros Island, or, like, maybe have a bunch of short stories about, like, their previous, um acquisitions, like, what they did, and, like, stealing stuff, and all that, because, I don't know, I just really love these characters, and I love the way that Roshni writes, and I just love the series so much, like, I think the plot is just amazing, and I don't know how I rank the series, I think The Gilded Wolves is probably still my favorite, just because I have so much nostalgia connected to that book, and then I would say probably The Silver Serpents, and then The Bronzed Beast, it's just, there were things in The Bronze Beast that I was just not a big fan of, like, them being apart, and, like, the setting a little bit and stuff like that, but, um, I did love the ending, so that was, like, it brought it up to, like, a five stars, so I am so happy with where we ended in the story, and I think that is gonna be it for this video. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the Gilded Wolves trilogy if you read it, or if you haven't read it and you just watched this because you wanted to know my feelings. Thank you. Um, but I'm gonna wrap it up now because I feel like I'm just gonna be rambling and talking in circles, but that is it for this video. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed. I'd love to know your thoughts on the trilogy or this video in the comment section down below, and all my social media links are in the description box below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!